Hello everyone. So I'm making the video after like a long break, two years mostly. And uh, I have been very busy with my own in the studio and we are working on a game that is close to release. Uh, you might get a few sneak peeks of that uh, during this video as I'll share some of the things and tools I've made for, you, for Unity and for that game using AI. So the purpose of this video is that my workflow for game development has changed drastically. It's not like that. It's not like I wasn't good at programming, but during this new advent of AI stuff, I have realized that uh, AI is the way to go because it literally gave me such a huge boost in productivity that initially I was uh, amazed. So here's the thing. Most people think that using AI for development involves uh, chatting with chat GPT and then copy pasting code and stuff like that. But that is actually not it. That's not how you're supposed to or the, the latest way or the most effective way of working with AI is. So I'm going to help you set up your workflow in the way I do it and the tools and how to like properly do it and take full advantage of AI. And uh, that's what this video is about. So it's gonna be a three part series where I teach you or hopefully help you reach hundreds of times of productivity. Uh, so let's do this. So this first part is gonna be setting up your tool and there, there are no two ways about it. I've tried all of the AI tools and uh, uh the only tool i can recommend at this time is cursor so i know there's windsurf i know I, there are other tools but uh cursor is what worked best for me and so that's what i'm going to recommend okay so number very first thing go install cursor and then you need to uh go to unity and you're going to need to install uh, the cursor package in order to integrate cursor with your project. For that, I will give you the link uh, in the description. So that's the link uh, for the integration into cursor. You go, <coughs> copy that link, go into Unity Package Manager and add package from Git URL. You paste it here and press add and it's gonna install it. Once you have installed it, and once cursor is installed in your system, you are gonna get these this option. Otherwise, this option won't appear. So once you've got this option, cursor is integrated with your Unity and double clicking on a script will open up cursor. Then the once you're in cursor, make sure you have the sidebar open because that's where the true magic of cursor happens in the composer agent mode. Okay, so the agent mode is it can just do things on its own. Open files, create files, delete files, commit, get, you know, commit for you, whatever, all of that. Then once you've done that, <clears throat> you're going to go into the marketplace for extensions, install the Unity extension. Once you install this, it's going to automatically install the C Sharp uh, extensions that are needed. C Sharp and C Sharp Dev Kit, et cetera. Once it will automatically do that. Okay, and once you have done that, go to File, Preferences, Cursor Settings. Okay, so that's where you superpower your cursor in order to work best with Unity and for game development. So this is something custom I wrote as rules for cursor, and I'm gonna try to share those uh, in the description <clears throat> as well. And I've also added this section in the end, which basically makes it keep a change log of whatever it's doing and updates that keeps updating the change log and attaching version numbers. It automatically commits to Git and all of that stuff. And it also updates the project settings.asset file uh, with the version number, which is basically this thing. So it, it will automatically up, uh, keep updating the version here as well. And also it will keep update the change log file. And then it can also do a release workflow by doing this. Uh, so all I have to say is 
do a release workflow. And it will basically just uh, do a couple of things. It will uh, update the change log file, up, upgrade the release number, move the changes from the unreleased section to the uh, new version, and then update the version number in Unity and figure out what the version number jump should be. And, and then it will commit on Git, add a Git tag, and uh, do all of that. And then you know you can ask it to push or push yourself. So once you have done this, pasted the cursor rules, I'll share them with you. You go into features, then you you know these are some basic settings. <clears throat> okay, so here's the thing, like uh, in enable Jolo mode, it helps for if you're do, doing a lot of Git commits and stuff. Other, otherwise, it will write the command for Git push or whatever, and then wait for you to accept it. So each commit is going to make you accept a few things. So I just enabled YOLO mode and told it that you're free to do git commands on, on your own without asking. So just write just completion commands, git commands, and other save commands. And then enable this, delete file protection, so that it always you know asks you from uh, when deleting stuff. And once you've done that, this is the next most important section, docs. So you got to give it the Unity manual and the Unity scripting reference. So this link, give, give it that this link and also the scripting reference, okay? The Unity manual for what, what version you prefer or currently using and the scripting reference for that version as well, okay? So once you give these links to it, it's going to index them and its performance for Unity related stuff is going to improve massively. Other stuff that if you're working with the new Unity UI system or Unity dots, then you can give it specific sections of those documents uh, as well uh, so that it can index them and they're more easily uh, reachable for it. So you can always ask it to go read the documents uh, and figure out what it's doing wrong and it usually will so another like and and the the basic features the completion features of uh, cursor are gonna amaze you on their own so i'm not gonna focus on them but things like it, it's not it's, it's automatically gonna figure out what you're trying to do most of the time and all you just have to do is press tab and like and it figures out like a human being would uh, so basically if i have a transform says uh, let's say if I have uh, one, now it knows uh, uh, we're going to need to create a new use case. Uh, let's say I say uh, serialize field, and then I say transform. Okay, so once I have a transform and I say spawn point for my first uh, my first particle system okay so let's try to confuse it or change it different so now since i said first it knows there must be a second one otherwise i would say my particle system so i press tab and it so now since it's a transform it has probably figured out that i'll probably need to instantiate it so i go to start and let, press tab now it has by this time, it has figured out that I'm probably going to need a prefab. So it's saying press tab to go take the cursor here. I press tab, and now it has automatically made two ref fields for the prefabs. Okay. So again, if it's, it's going to amaze you, now it's asking me to add the usings. So again, it's uh, going to amaze you like this. But uh, that's not the purpose of this video. The purpose of this video is going to be the big stuff, the, the stuff that makes you even more productive, like the big things. Okay, so I'm gonna address them and the detailed use of this composer. However, let's do something fun and fast. So let's remove all files from context. So right now the agent has no context. So I ask it, make me a script that would make a 3D object move in a random pattern 
changing its direction every few seconds. Okay, so let's do something blind here. Let's see how that process would go. But in the next videos, I will teach you the proper way to do it. I'm just, you know, going, doing something. Okay, so here's the thing. It is creating a new script here, okay? So it created a new random movement script and it also assumed a few things. So it, it's a serialized move speed, direction, smoothness, target, whatever, okay? And it also did not use a rigid body. So that's the interesting thing here. Since you have to think of yourself as the leader in this situation, okay? So let's create a 3D object and put that script, it created on it, random movement, okay? And just press play, it should work. But if I wanted to do rigid body movement, then of course I would have to tell it. Uh, okay, so here's the thing, I go, um, I want you to, okay, here's the thing, whatever it has done previously in this window is in the context now. So it knows what it did. I want you to use, rigid body movement instead and don't forget to turn off the gravity okay so now it's gonna modify that same script to change how it it was previously doing things okay so now it updated everything i can individually inspect changes make changes whatever and press accept now it's going to use rigid body and then if i see it took a reference to the rigid body and it's going to try to find it if it doesn't find it it's going to create it uh good okay and for our example and let's try it again and there you go now it's doing a rigid body based movement and uh, okay by the way don't the another in important thing you need to understand here is do not start thinking of this whole system as a hands-free approach to gaming or game development uh do not be like make me a game where this this that's not gonna give you good results it's up to you to think about how that game will be structured and then tell it to do those things step by step you should know how that kind of game would be made. Uh, so for example, like I want to spawn these objects, right? So how do I do this? Okay, one way would be to, I want 10 of these objects on screen. Now you're basically giving it way too much freedom in figuring out what we want. We do not want this. How I would do is I want to create a spawning system for this game. It should be a singleton. So maybe create a generic singleton class that we can use, that we can reuse again when we need more singleton and inherit our spawner from it the spawner should spawn a new object every few seconds okay and that's mostly about it do not give or go too deep give it step-by-step -step in instructions so that it adheres to structure its performance will keep improving what once it starts to see other files and how you have been doing things. If you give it too much freedom and start thinking of it as a hands-free approach, it's uh, not, okay, uh, not gonna work. By the way, okay, so it created the generic singleton class, then it creating an object spawner. Okay, so it created an object spawner, inherited it from that, that class I uh, told it to, and there you go. So spawn object manually. Okay, it also added gizmos. Okay, sometimes it will overdo things. You gotta tell it not to do things like this if you don't want it to. Um, spawn objects manually. Always read the code it does so that you understand. 
so it used uh, core team and uh, i think that's about it for this video and in the next video i'll go much more deeper into the things that you previously did not do in game development uh, because they were too much of a grunt work things like creating custom tools and stuff and i'm going to tell you how to create amazing tools and start thinking of game development <clears throat> in ways that is going to make it way more fun and also 100 times more uh <clears throat> you know productive for you okay so see you in the second part